Media Network overview. So why do we need a global video media network? Well, to observe rare meteor shower outbursts, we have to have larger longitudinal coverage. For example, in 2012, there was a draconic outburst over Central Asia that nobody recorded optically. Also, we need more high quality observations of meteorite dropping fireballs. At the moment, we have only about 40 meteorites with orbits out of thousands of found meteorites. Next, we need transparent and open data reduction methods. A couple of years ago, it became really obvious at one IMC that there's a lack of, of high quality tools, and that's something that we wanted to bring to the community. And finally, we need a, a large high quality optical data set that is public so we can do good science. So what we really need is a geographically distributed scientific instrument to facilitate deployment and keep costs low, um, our systems are hosted and deployed by amateur astronomers, usually in their houses. Uh, the installation is simple and the maintenance is simple too. And we make sure that replacement parts for our cameras are readily available locally or can be bought online very cheaply. So this is how our systems look like. The Raspberry Pi 4 is used as the computer. You can buy it very cheaply for about $35. And the sensors, uh, we're using the IMX291. Uh, they have an HD resolution and they're operated 25 frames per second. We use a various lenses. The most commonly used one is the 3.6 millimeter lens, which gives a field of view about 90 times 45 degrees. And um, in nominal conditions it gives a stellar limiting magnitude of about plus six and if you live in a city uh, with more light pollution we usually use eight millimeter lenses and if you want to compute very precise trajectories we recommend 16 millimeter lenses and we have uh, a couple of those systems deployed as well Everything in parts, if you want to build it yourself, is about 200 euros, and we have build instructions available. And if you want to buy a plug-and-play system, we have a private industry partner, and they will sell you a, a system for about 400 euros that's uh, tested and assembled, and you'll literally just have to plug and play it. Now, as for the software, it is also completely transparent and open source. So RMS, the Raspberry Pi Meteor Station software, is available on GitHub, and it does data collection and calibration. The data from the station then gets uploaded to the server, where our trajectory estimation software is running. And within about 24 hours, our tra all trajectories are published on our website, and they're computed using a tested method. And these are a few examples of the data we get. Uh, if your camera is deployed in a very dark location, for example, in the upper left, uh, this is a camera deployed in La Palma, which has wonderful skies. Uh, even with this 3.6 millimeter lens, you can get stars down to magnitude seven. Um, we also record a lot of uh, fireballs, or in some cases, meteorite droppers. This is one from Ontario. And you can definitely see all fragmentation details, the wake, and now at the end, you'll also see a couple of little fragments. Uh, in the lower left corner, um, you can see that when there is a major meteor shower active, sometimes we can get thousands of meteors per night per camera. And we also have a couple of all sky systems deployed, but we don't really use them for uh, trajectory purposes just because of the, the low resolution. We put a lot of emphasis on calibration methods. With the 3.6 millimeter lenses in our cameras, we can achieve a photometric precision of about one arc minute. Now, we found that we have to recalibrate the camera pointing quite often. So in the lower left corner, you can see a graph of camera pointing throughout the night, basically shows the movement. So in about eight hours of observation, the camera can move as much as 10 arc minutes due to thermal effects. So this is an order of magnitude more than the astrometric precision itself. So that's basically needs to be done if you want to guarantee the measurement quality. And also on the right, you can see uh, the photometric calibration. Um, and we also found that we have to recalibrate the photometric offset throughout the night um, just because of how the sky conditions change. So with these frequent recalibrations, we guarantee the quality of positional and photometric measurements. And here is one example of a meteorite dropping fireball observed by GMN cameras. Uh, when we observe these bright fireballs, we usually don't use automated centroids. It's really hard to guarantee the, the quality of positional picks. So that's why we do it manually, often within 24 hours, because we, we set up the tool chain to make this uh, easy. Uh, so what was interesting in this case, if you look at the spatial fit residuals 
of the trajectory in the upper left corner, uh, you can see that at the end there was a deviation. Now that's not a problem in the, the calibration of the measurements. In fact, this fireball really did have uh, transverse uh, velocity at the end. The final fragment just uh, just deviated from the initial trajectory. So what we did is we computed the trajectory of this final fragment, as you can see it in this middle graph here, which had uh, positional uncertainties of only about 15 meters. And here in the lower left corner, you can see that the velocity measurements were very consistent between stations. When we did predict the location of the fall, it turns out that it fell into a minefield, so we didn't really want to uh, send people there for a search. And this is the current coverage of the network at the height of 100 kilometers. Uh, currently, we have more than about more than 200 stations in 20 different countries. As you can see, most of Central and Western Europe is well covered. Uh, we do have more uh, cameras being deployed in Northern Spain, Israel, and uh, Ireland. And as for North America, Ontario and uh, parts of Quebec are covered, and we do have a large network in New Mexico. We have a couple of stations in Arizona that are going to be deployed quite soon. And as for the radiance, uh, this data is available on our website. This is a QR code that you might want to scan that will lead you to that website. Uh, in 2019, we had about 80,000 uh, radiance. And in 2020, we have about 67,000 and counting. Our current goal is to have about 1,000 meteor orbits per day. Uh, right now, we're trying to expand our longitudinal coverage. As you have seen before, we only cover North America and Europe, and we'd really like to have Asia and probably Hawaii, and of course, uh, the whole of the Southern Hemisphere. Now, because the GMN data is public and the uncertainties of every trajectory are well defined, it was used in several publications already. Due to the high precision of the data, for the first time it was possible to measure dispersions of meteor showers with a high degree of accuracy. These measurements will help constrain models of gravitational focusing of meteor showers. This is useful when predicting meteoroid impact risk on spacecraft. Next, the GMN measurements of Orionid radiance compare well to model values. In preparation, we have a few papers. There's going to be a GMN methodology paper, which describes how we do things to a high degree of accuracy. And there's going to be a separate meteor shower dispersion paper. Finally, we're very proud of our GMN community. We have a mailing list where all meteor um, camera hosts uh, talk together and we solve our problems and coordinate uh, through that mailing list. Thank you for your attention, and I would like to thank all GMN team members and contributors. Thank you.